Getting this cooler working was a bit of a struggle. It was some parts human error on our end, and some parts mechanical error. This thing is a $100 cooler from AliExpress. It's the PC cooler, all lowercase, W120, and it uses both open loop cooling, liquid, and a few air cooling components as well, like traditional heat pipes with a fan. We had some small leaks during our live stream, and after the stream, we discovered that the screws securing the inlet manifold were actually loose on the tower, causing significant leakage as water filled the pipes. After fixing this, we were finally able to test this truly unique hybrid water slash air cooler to its fullest potential. Before that, this video is brought to you by the new Gamers Nexus Blueprint logo shirt, which features a GN logo made in CAD software using accurate angle and length measurements for the drafted lines and the design, just for fun. This Blueprint logo is placed on a Heather True Royal shirt by Bella and Canvas, and is 52% heirloom cotton with 48% polyester. We use tearaway labels that are easily removed. The print is an opaque ink that pops vibrantly on the shirt and fits with our blueprint theme. And the shirts are extremely comfortable thanks to the Heather Dual Blend materials and feel lightweight and well fitted to wear. Pick one up at store.gamersnexus.net or at the link below. First off, we're probably doing a teardown as either a live stream or a separate video. So you'll want to check that because I know I want to see what's inside of the cooler and how the cold plate's designed. So we'll have a separate video doing a teardown of it. Make sure you do check back for that. Other than that, though, it's a really interesting product. It's actually been pretty fun to work with just because it's so unique and weird. And you know they never sold any of these things because it was $100. It was launched like or showed seven years ago at Computex at 2018 minus seven years. So I guess Computex 2011. And inside the box, when we opened it, it's got like yellowing from age. The thermal paste that came with it was completely hardened and basically unusable. So it's been sitting on a shelf for a long time at this point. Probably not the most successful product, but a very interesting one, and that's why it was fun to test. So it's the PC Cooler W120, 100 bucks. It comes with a fan that's actually pretty high CFM, but it is a bit noisy. And uh, other than that, it's got a couple of liquid tubes in the middle of the fin stack that are used for actual water cooling. You can hook it up by normal fittings, even to standard EK or thermal take or whatever other components you want to use. So very interesting. Then you could also use it as a straight air cooler if you want, though we haven't tested that yet. We do plan to, however. It's just that at some point, it's not really going to be uh, much better than the low end liquid coolers. And you'll see that as we go through the numbers today. So aside from our own incompetence during the stream and problems with just setting the cooler up in general, the thing did actually have a few problems, mainly being the cold plate on the underside, the contact side to the IHS has a bit of wear on it. So it's got some staining or some corrosion and that limits its ability to conduct. And then the thermal paste was no good. So we did a test with that and then a test with our standardized paste. And then also the screws on the top of the manifold for the intake for water were loose, which caused it to leak massively. And that was uh, kind of figured out and solved easily once it was figured out. But now it's time to go through the test. So for testing, we have one chart we'll go through with just the W120 results to make it easy. But the tests are basically noise normalized as always. We have stock thermal paste from them. We have our own thermal paste. We've got uh, adding a 360 radiator to it to see if that helps at all. And then uh, a noise normalized with the radiator as well. So let's start off with just the W120 results and then go from there. In full stock configuration, including the stock age-hardened thermal paste, the cooler kept the CPU at about 60.7 degrees Celsius over ambient, which is one of the worst results we've recorded on this bench. Remember, this is without any radiators and just a straight pump to and from the cooler, pump and reservoir in this case. The stock fan is mounted to the fin stack and pushes across the water pipes and the normal heat pipes. Replacing the thermal paste dropped temperatures by 6 degrees. As always with our cooling testing, this was conducted with multiple repetitions and then averaged. The results were consistent with a 6 degree reduction against the included paste each time. For reference, we also have a photo of the cooler with the original paste after removal, so you can clearly tell how hardened the paste had become and how it's basically cured to a point of limiting its thermal efficacy of the compound. Back to the chart, a stock test with our standardized thermal paste had us at 54 degrees over ambient, adding a Thermal Take 360 radiator and three high-end fans 
two Corsair MLs and one Noctua A12 resulted in a reduction over 10 degrees Celsius. This is more a testament to the fans and radiator than anything, and rising water temperatures required the extra cooling power directed straight at the liquid. Noise normalized, the stock setup operated at 58 degrees, with the radiator version at 45 degrees. Moving on to comparative data with other coolers, the PC Cooler W120, using our controlled standardized paste and no radiator, landed between an NZXT M22 120mm closed loop cooler and EVGA CLC120 at a lower RPM. This places the W120 as well below the X42, the NZXT one, with a very low fan speed of 1050 RPM, and also below the $90 to $100 Corsair H100 IV2 at low RPMs. The lower RPMs limit the cooling power of these products, but it also means that our noise levels are well below the W120's noise levels. Adding a radiator boosted us to H100 IV2 performance with the PC cooler product, with the H100 IV2 at 1500 RPM at 41 degrees over ambient for each. This is still unimpressive for the PC Cooler W120, particularly given the overall quality difference between them, favoring Corsair massively. The 360 radiator and high-end fans we equipped are being outmatched by cheaper coolers and worse fans, which means that we're having trouble with cooling the cold plate. We'll be opening up the cooler separately to investigate if there are any microfins at all in the cold plate or if there's anything good in general in there. We're bottlenecked at the W120's cold plate and pipes for sure. For our next test, we normalized all coolers to 40 dBA of output, which ensures that we test on somewhat level footing versus noise output. Most people tune their fan speeds to tolerable noise levels, so this allows quieter coolers to spin faster and cool better, while louder coolers will be quieted to meet our noise requirement in the middle. The result is a test of overall cooling efficiency versus a fixed noise level. At 40 dBA, the PC Cooler W120, without a radiator at all, operated at the bottom of the chart at 58.2 degrees Celsius over ambient, and this is the worst device we've tested yet, at 40 dBA anyway, and operates even behind the 120 closed-loop liquid coolers like the EVJ CLC120 and NZXT M22, which operated at 49 degrees and 54 degrees respectively. The W120 is significantly worse for noise normalized testing. Although its fan pushes a lot of air, it's loud and uses cheap bearings and plastic, and also proves turbulent through the fin stack. This produces a lot of noise that could be avoided with a better design, like from one of the more mainstream companies. With a 360mm fat thermal take radiator attached, using two Corsair ML fans and one Noctua H12 fan, the PC Cooler W120 operated at 45 degrees over ambient. At this point, the radiator is doing the bulk of the cooling, as our water temperature measurements indicated that the cooler doesn't dissipate enough heat to keep liquid temperatures low. More on this momentarily. With the radiator, the W120 starts costing beyond $200, but it performs about equivalently to a Kraken X42, 140mm CLC, and other $100 coolers, like the H100 IV2 at 40 dBA. Water temperature measurements were conducted with a K-type thermocouple placed within the pump and reservoir combo unit from Thermaltake. This measured distilled water as it returned into the inlet from the cooler, and over time we can see that the blue line, representing the cooler with no radiator but with our standard paste, slowly rises to about 36 degrees. The red line, representing the 360mm radiator test, only rises to 24 degrees. Note that ambient temperature was 21 degrees. We're not showing delta T values here, just straight temperature from the probe. We have adjusted with an offset as appropriate. And finally, the orange line, representing the original paste, illustrates that we have a clear problem with getting heat into the cold plate and getting rid of it effectively, where we rise almost linearly. Noise levels at max RPM for the W120 fan place the cooler at 48.5 dBA, equal with the X42 at max RPM, and the X42 and other nearby coolers and noise are all superior in thermals, making this one a hard sell from any perspective. So that's it. That's the PC Cooler W120. Really interesting product and definitely fun to work with. Not at all something we can reasonably recommend to you. It comes with pretty low-end or cheaply made parts anyway doesn't work particularly well, does worse than cheaper coolers on the market, and it starts really adding up, because it's $100 for the cooler, but then you supply your own pump and radiator, it doesn't come with one, your own tubes, your own liquid, all that stuff. If you want a radiator with fans, that's on you as well, and clearly that has a massive impact here to a point of actually making it a usable product, but at that point, you really might as well just put a, a water block on it and be done with it, and get rid of the tower cooler, although it is certainly unique and interesting. 
Leakage, a potential concern, just go through all the screws and make sure they're tight before you start working on it and then do a leak test and you'll be good to go there. So no, we wouldn't recommend it. It is, however, very interesting and fun to work with. And that's it for the PC Cooler W120. As always, you can help us out by subscribing to catch all of our videos. Go to store.cameraznexus.net to pick up our brand new blueprint design shirt, which we actually used uh, some CAD software to get the exact measurements of things on the shirt as well. So it's, it's an accurate to reality nerd version of the GM logo uh, on the store in blue, Heather Blue for the shirt and store.gamersnexus for that. Otherwise, go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. It helps out directly, and I'll see you all next time.